McKenzie, space again, gets the pass away for Lampy! Kirofano, welcome to the All Black Podcast. Awesome podcast today, coming out of the studio. And as we all know, the All Blacks were announced on Monday night on Sky Sports, the breakdown. Um, first team of the season, and we are lucky enough to have in the studio three of the guys who are named. Two are debutants, Finlay Christie, Ethan Blackadder, and one old master, just minding them, keeping an eye on the lads today, making sure they get their first days right. Big Kal Tunukiafi. Welcome to the studio, boys. Cheers, mate. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Mate, busy week, normal week. You know what's going on. Scraping away the dust a wee bit still, but <laughs> getting there. Mate, um, you know, congratulations, particularly um, the debutants first. want to chat to you guys first. Um, you know, like we talk with a lot of guys who have been in the studio, um, it was, it's gone through a lot of different iterations how we announce an all-black team over the years. We almost um, maybe went a little bit old school, a little bit new school on Monday night by announcing it um, on the show. My understanding is that no one knew, or a lot of people didn't know. You you found out through the naming on Monday night on Sky's The Breakdown. Is that right? Um, yep. Had no idea, and yeah, watching it, saw it for the first time, so um, took me by surprise. Yeah, mate. We'll we'll go to you first because I think I don't I think most people in the country know how you found out now because of the you know social media is a wonderful thing. And but let talk us through that, mate. You were there with the lads. Were you? Um, were you pushing into third gear, or were you actually just winding down? You know, after Saturday celebrations, or, or um, you know, where were you? Yeah, it was pretty tame. We were, we're at um, Danny Doolan's in Ellerslie. Yeah, which we went down for a bit of dinner and just a pint or two, um, just as the last supper sort of with the boys. A few of the boys leaving and whatnot, so um, stayed around for the announcement, and that's that's where it happened. So, yeah, like I said, it was pretty crazy and um, pretty cool way to find out, I guess. Mate, and for you, I mean. You know, almost everyone who comes in here is very humble and, and doesn't like to talk it up too much, but genuinely surprised, thought you were in the mix like you had, and I'm, I'm happy to say it, you'd had an excellent Super Rugby Trans-Tasman season, particularly um, over the last sort of four to six weeks, we're playing excellent footy, and um, you know, deep down you thought maybe there was a chance? Um, first, yeah, thanks, um, but nah, seriously had um, no expectations or nothing really, we were sort of all giving Tom Robinson a bit of air because we thought he was going to be in it, so... That was pretty much the main um, reasoning behind it, but yeah, no idea at all. Mate, and that's probably that in itself. That's the, the double-edged sword or the roller coaster of emotion is where you get the thumbs up um, to be <coughs> officially New Zealand's best redhead rugby player, which I know is a, a big thing. Um, but also, you know, a good mate, a guy who has played so well lately, you know, and by the looks of it, from what I see from the outside, is a really important leader within the Blues and a big part of their success he doesn't get the nod. So you're there and, and you want to have a beer and celebrate and with your mates, but probably want to be considerate of some of the lads around you too. Yeah, well, I think they got they got to have one ginger in the team, surely. So. <laughs> Our allocation, <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> but yeah, nah, as you said, it was, um, yeah, it's, he's good about it too. He, he reckons he had no expectations either, so um, straight into the beers after for him too. So <laughs> Yeah, totally. And for you, mate, was it one more beer, celebrate for the lads and then... Um, sort of try and take it all in, give mum and dad a ring. You know who was who you on the blower to first? Yeah, um, sort of tape it off a bit after the announcement, <laughs> and yeah, like you said, uh, rang the olds and um, had a yarn to them. Apparently missed um, Fozzie's call. He oh. reckons he, he called me, but I didn't see that come through. The phone was going nuts. So. You have a history of missing important calls, don't you? From what I can tell. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Mate, and Ethan, for you, congratulations as well. Debutant as well, first time that your name's been read out in an all-black list. Where were you, mate? Yeah, f- thanks very much, mate. Um, I was just in um, Christchurch at home, <coughs> um, playing some Call of Duty, Cold War, and <laughs> my, my flatmate had the, yeah, he had it on his phone on Sky and just had the audio on, so I was just jamming away, and then he, yeah, lost it and ran over and congratulated me. Yeah, and it was early doors too, being an alphabetical thing, and and you know, like same as what we said for Finley, like particularly um, the second part, or just this whole season. Actually, you've you've shrugged off your injuries. You had a few stop starts with injuries over the last couple of years, and you've just put a heap of game time in and just played really, really well. Did you? Was it hope? You know, were you were hoping or had no expectation at all because it is so competitive in the loose forwards. Um, yeah, yeah, a few niggles last year and stuff, but um, yeah, no, no expectations really. I just wanted to get back and just enjoy the footy and whatever come from it. Yeah, come from it pretty much. Cool, well done, mate. And and big Carl, it wasn't your first radio, not the first time <coughs> your name's been read out, but um, again, uh, really competitive in your position. Um, you never know, sort of thing. You you had you had a, a heads up, or were you just like everyone else, just hoping that. 
Um, you had to wait a wee while, being a T, but um, you know, super excited and and when you got the name read out. Yeah, no, it was. Um, it's always exciting to hear your name. Um, I, I wasn't watching it, but my 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 dad told me, and I was just happy to be in the mix again. But um, yeah, I don't really expect too much, just because anytime you find my name in the media, I'm, I'm ex All Black Carl. I'm just like, oh, shucks, I'm always an ex All Black. So um, whenever I'm na- renamed in the team, like, oh, sweet as. We got current, current All Black. <laughs> there it is, mate. Now, nah, well done. And hugely deserved. And like, is there, for you, um, it was such a meteoric rise your first time round. Like, it was awesome. You know, you went from being um, someone who's just getting back in footy to get fit again, get healthy again, play with your mates, bit of connection through to North Harbour, through to I might go overseas, hang on a minute. Um, there might be some super rugby work for me to do here to playing every single game of rugby for the All Blacks in 2018. How does the two experiences compare, you know, like going from being, making it for the first time to, like you say, am I now an ex-All Black? Am I back in the mix? You know, like how did the how did the two emotions compare? Uh, I think nothing compares to your first time in name just because um, I think that year, 2018, playing every game and you could see from my first... Um, debut you know the tears started flying just because you can't sometimes you can't um you know believe that you're there yeah and within the I think it was a year I was like you know working security and stuff and then I'm on the field singing the national anthem it's, you can't you can't compare to anything from your first yeah <laughs> mate how good mate so good so good to have you back in the squad I hope it goes really really well I want to chat to you guys a little bit about the weekend apologies Ethan that we can't <laughs> address that with you but firstly lads um I want to talk a little bit about Super Rugby Trans Tasman, and and also, you didn't do as well as you wanted in Super Rugby Aotearoa, and that, you know, players and coaches talked a lot about it in the public. Like by having that that gap between the two, was it good to have a reset? You know, like you could sit down and go, that wasn't quite what we th- wanted our standard to be in the first part of the year. We've got an opportunity now to reset and attack the sec- second competition. Was that to have that break was actually quite helpful? Yeah, I'd say. Um, I think after. Not being happy with ourselves after Aotearoa, um, the team came together, coaches, players, and we just talked about how it's not very often you get a second chance. So we went over like everything that we wanted to be better at and um, what was important to us with, within the culture and stuff of the Blues. And I think, um, yeah, did pretty well to show that in the end. Mate, it was, you know, um, you probably, you guys... Obviously, being at home, you probably did go into the final being the favourites. But, you know, as usual, the Highlanders, you know, well, maybe they don't play by themselves because they always play by themselves. So maybe that is their standard. But, geez, they gave you a good run, didn't you? And I think, I don't know, as a rugby supporter, probably the thing I was most impressed with was the fact you went behind, you know, with 10, 15 minutes left on the clock. And it looked like maybe the Highlanders were going to grab one. But you are able to keep your composure um, and actually... Pretty awesome experience for Harry Plummer to bang over two massive goals. You know, a young fella making his way in professional footy as well. Sometimes starts, sometimes doesn't, sometimes kicking, sometimes isn't. To bang those over under pressure and to see the way you guys played in the last 10 minutes, is that almost the most satisfying part of the season is to do it in those really big moments when you're seriously under the pump, you know, like you're, it was potentially slipping away at home and you were able to still get the job done. That's in the big minutes, you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Uh, like you said, those massive moments from Harry were were pretty cool because he um, he gets a pretty hard rap sometimes from from supporters and whatnot. So him standing up and not one but two moments at the end of a final to pretty much seal it is uh, massive, and he won't be forgetting that anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, and like um, you know, you talked about that reset, Carl. You know, is it the um, an aggregation of all the little things? You know, like your it's, it's little standards and perhaps when you're just in the routine you let it slip a little bit and that reset let you have a look at things or was it actually, um, you know, players started playing more to their ability or they pushed themselves, you know, look, it's it's always hard to to put your f- nail on what makes teams good, you know, what's a good, what creates a good culture. But like in that reset, was it just a bit of honesty or? Yeah, I'd say a lot of honesty just because um, we were kind of... Uh, I don't know, not not pointing <coughs> a finger or anything, but we, we were all just looking at each other, like, kind of thinking, oh, w- what did we do wrong? So everyone had to kind of, like, just be honest and, like, um, put their hand up and just be like, oh, actually, I, I, I wasn't doing this, I wasn't doing that. So guys were just being honest and being able to um, reflect on what they did wrong and, be, um, yeah, get better at it. 
Mate, for you, Finley, was there anything you changed between the two competitions? Like you, I think your game stepped up in the um, particular over the last four to six weeks. The best rugby I've seen you play, which doesn't really mean much. I'm not that, uh, you know, particularly, um, I'm not a selector or anything, but you played particularly well. You know, was there anything that, that changed for you in that second part of the season? Um, thanks, but um, not really. We sort of just, like Carl said, we all um, had a look at ourselves and, and each other and, and we sort of came together and... Um, presented to the team what we what we're all going to do for the team to get better so as units um for example the inside inside said these are our goals for this next season and and this is what we're going to change and and we're going to sort of vouch to do so for me it was just about weekly prep um keeping it consistent and and getting all my work ons and whatnot in um each week not slacking off so that's pretty much what the whole team did eh? Mm. Awesome. And lads, it, um, we don't need to go into great detail, but are some of the boys still out in Auckland there somewhere, wandering around aimlessly, you know, after a big Saturday? Has it been a big couple of days and, and now you've got to clear the fog and switch on? I don't know if, um, did they get the cup on to break down or? Not sure. I think Leon. Uh, for a day or two. I think yeah. Leon. There might I be a big ginger <laughs> calling around somewhere <laughs> in some <laughs> dark alleyway. But. Yeah, I think... Uh, Probably across the road from the training facility somewhere, isn't it, in the lounge or, yeah. or oh, who yeah. knows, or in that terrible boat that he runs that I think I saw on one of those Sky Sports shows, <laughs> which is probably yeah. lost at sea. But, um, <laughs> Ethan, over to you, mate. Um, it's a it's a funny one, isn't it, where you don't lose a game and and you know, but then you're not there at the big dance. Um, how have you guys reflected on the season? I mean, you had a good Super Rugby Trans Tasman season. You know, you didn't drop a game. Um, you know, you put the Reds to the sword at home, which is you know a pretty strong side. Um, but just in that in that last game, you couldn't put together enough points to get over the Rebels to make the final. Was was everyone still really positive about how it all finished? Because it's a bit bittersweet. Um, or you know, the, the fire burns to to get back into it next season and and try and go one step further, depending on what all the competitions look like. Um, yeah, it was yeah, it was a tight competition. Obviously, we all ended up on twenty three points at the end, but. Um, yeah, we, we had opportunities in that game to, yeah, get that last try and, yeah, we didn't quite get there and, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty gutted after the game. It, it was the first game I've been involved with that felt like a loss, like a win, felt like a loss, but, um, yeah, you soon move on pretty quick and, um, yeah, that's just sport at the end of the day. Yep. And it was um, <laughs> great to have a few guys play their last games and um, see them off properly. Yep. yep. Awesome. Let's, one thing I, I mentioned to you before we came on, what I love about this group at the moment is rugby today for a lot of us, a supporter like myself, a fan, is you watch a bit of First 15 rugby on TV, you get to know some players a little bit through that. Um, you know, quite often people might be into the ITM Cup and academies very early and there's a quite a traditional pathway for a footy player, but like all you guys did it a little bit different and I think it's a little bit inspiring for a bunch of people who they might not have made the First 15 for three years or they might not be in an academy straight away. Um, but you guys did it all a little bit different. I want to sort of talk to each of you about that a bit because, like, Carl, for you, like, actually, when I was uh, doing a bit of prep for the interview, for to see someone who wasn't actually playing rugby, then 18 months later, he's fully contracted. You know, two years down the track, you've started, or you've played in every match for the All Blacks. Like, that's pretty amazing. And that's, um, does it still blow you away a little bit when you sit back and think, you know, a few years ago or Four or five years ago, I was, I was on the door running security. I had a young family, and I was, you know, wondering what, what was around the corner. Yeah, no, it, it still plays on my head, like, any time I think back to it. Like, um, I think that that year, um, being caught into the All Blacks, you know, playing with the Chiefs, and, like, my wife got pregnant. We had twins. Like, everything was happening in that one year. So it was, like, pretty overwhelming. Like, um, yeah, I f still think about it, and... Um, Find find it pretty crazy, mate. Did you, especially in two thousand eighteen, playing so much rugby pr pretty early in a professional rugby career? Did you just come home with the kids and the family and say, "No one talked to me for an hour. Do not talk to me. I need to sit down and chill out." You know, because that is you have gone from zero to a hundred like like nothing else. But now look at you. You're an old master. Um, you know, and um, has it been? Have you settled into the routine of being a fully professional footy player um, after a whirlwind start? Yeah, no, I think it's taken this long just for me to, you know, have a good routine. And, um, yeah, I, I thought I was all right in 2018, but, like, it, it takes a while to kind of get used to what the body needs and what the body can do. 
So, like, um, when it comes to training and especially my nutrition, um, <laughs> I finally feel like I've um, got it under control and know what I'm doing now. So it's taken a little while, but pretty happy where I'm at now. Yeah, and you, I know I've heard you speak before, really appreciative of the opportunities you were given at the Chiefs and, and to give you that chance. Um, but it must be cool to, to be back home as well, playing for the Blues. Your family's really close. It's the team you probably always supported as a young person and to be part of the journey of taking them from, you know, Constant improvement, constant improvement right to the stage that, that you played in a final. It's got to be awesome for you being a local lad. Yeah, no, I've, I've always wanted to, you know, um, play for the Blues. I've grown up watching them, but I was actually a big fan of the Chiefs going to Wesley College. That's a Chiefs school, so I always wanted to play at the Chiefs, but um, given the opportunity by Tom Coventry for me to go into the Chiefs, and once that season was over and Tom gave me the call that he's uh, forwards coach at the Blues, it was an easy move for me once you gave me that call. Cool, and I want to ask you something too, because you've been there for a while now, um, is, you know, years ago you hear tales of, um, you know, new players coming to the team and, and older players will give them nothing, you know, because you're, you're in competition, you're in comp- competition for a jersey, everyone wants to play test matches, but you hear a little bit more tales now of, of um, existing squad members, older squad members doing everything they possibly can to help new players come in and hit the ground running um, so that they can be the best All Black they can be. You know, like, um, was that the experience you had or, you know, there's still there's a couple of times at, at live training where you were, um, you know, there was still a few old tricks there? I've, I've heard about that kind of thing, that kind of culture where no one wants to help anyone, they just want to be the best and, like, you know, keep all the secrets to themselves. But I was pretty lucky, you know, I had came in and um, Joe Moody, Tim Perry looked after me and... Um, I'm pretty lucky to be learning off them and being able to help guys learn off myself. So it's a pretty good culture now that um, guys are trying to help each other be the best and not just um, all for themselves, more for the team. Awesome. And Finley, for you, mate, like as I said, a little bit non-traditional, came over from Scotland when you were a young fella, um, you know, budding Olympic gymnast, and (laughs) you're a young man. But, um, you know, point being that, Rugby wasn't necessarily your first sport, your first option. I've heard you say multiple times in different interviews that um, actually being an All Black wasn't it? on your radar for a long time or even being a professional rugby player wasn't on your radar for a long time. You're an excellent student at times, you know, an excellent um, club rugby player and, and enjoyed yourself. And it was only over time that um, becoming a professional rugby player um, got more in your sights and, and really new, unique position where... Um, you know, an option of playing for two countries as well. You know, your Scottish heritage, I'm sure you've had multiple inquiries from Scotland around whether you'd be interested in going over to that part of the world. I think maybe COVID might have saved us and kept you here for a little bit. Um, but, mate, talk us about that. Talk us about being named in the All Blacks with that sort of background, you know? Yeah, I think it just goes to show how fast things can change. Um, like you said, uh, went down to university in Christchurch with not many ad- aspirations of playing professional footy and um, yeah, managed to have a couple of good club seasons down there and that's where I got the call from Tasman so from there it just all happened so quickly played three months at Tasman and then all of a sudden had a super rugby contract on the table at the Chiefs and um, just yeah, really kicked off from there within six months I'd gone from like you said being a student to, to being in camp with a super rugby team so back then I was pinching myself with that and then I guess it's happened again um, at the moment with getting called into the All Blacks. So, yeah, like I said, it just goes to show how quickly things can change and if you work hard, it can all happen. Because, um, you know, jokes aside, that's one thing that, that gets thrown around a lot is you do work really hard. You do a huge amount of work on your skills. But you've been around a few Super Rugby franchises, which is awesome. You've probably been able to play alongside and learn from some really, really good footy players and really good coaches. Um, is there a reason why you're probably playing some of your best footy ever um, at the Blues? Is it maturity? Um, is it a more confidence that you... The imposter sy- syndrome's gone, you know, you belong, you, you feel like you're, um, you know, a, a top quality super rugby player. Like, why have you, why have the stars aligned for you at the moment? Um, yeah, I think it's a bit of everything. Like you said, I was um, pretty young in my first couple of years and probably didn't quite know all the the way around, you know, preparation every week and, and working everything like that. Um, and then obviously being behind a couple of All Blacks early, early on, I was I was more in a sort of learning phase where I just wanted to learn as much as I can off them. Didn't really expect to play much, um, especially at the Chiefs. And I was I was quite lucky to, to get a few games. Um, I was Brad um, broke his leg, so um, I think it's a yeah a bit of everything. Just 
this last couple of years I've, I've really started to nail my preparation and um, like you said, work on my skills a lot more because um, obviously as a halfback, your, your key role is, is skill. So um, that's pretty much been my focus and it's um, yeah seemed to be working all right. I want to go back to a couple of steps backwards is just um, and ask you a little bit about Tasman. Like, what a success story, really. Like, and obviously, Ethan, you're there as well. Like, um, you know, it's that wonderful bridge between club footy and super rugby. There's probably an opportunity to go all sorts of ways. You know, it can be semi-professional, it can be professional, it can be a bit more of a, a throwback to amateur. For whatever reason, you've made it work down there. You've made it work to the extent that you're one of the top sides um, in a national provincial competition. Um, you know, did beat Auckland last year in the final. Um, what's in the water down there? Because that's a hell of an effort. There's not a huge amount of people down there. It's not a big area. You know, in previous days, um, Marlborough and Nelson Bays were in Div 2, sometimes even Div 3 if you go right back in your history. And now, these days, one of our top um, provincial sides. Like, what's in the water down there, mate? Uh, it's probably just a, a credit to the sort of whole organisation and the, the people that are involved there. Um, Yes, through from coaches to to the management to to the players and even the people in the office, um, we've got a lot of locals there, um, especially in the coaching group and now in sort of like the senior players group, um, people like Ethan and and Dave Havili and whatnot that are awesome leaders. And then you've got Andrew Goodman, Shane Christie that were both um, Marco legends now coaching it. So I guess that all just flows through. Just the passion for the team and the province. Um, and everyone just sort of feeds off it and yeah, it's just a real great environment to be around and everyone loves coming back there. Yeah. Mate, you play good footy too, you know, you've got Will Jordan, like you say, Ethan, Dave's playing amazing footy this year, isn't he? So it's a, it's a good group of lads. Mate, for you, looking forward, who knows what's in the future, but um, hopefully some test match rugby. Uh, how's your hucker? Like you, um, you know, you might be, you know, probably just in behind Jeez. the main man, I'd suggest, with your imposing figure and, um, you know, you, a little bit, a few uh, bathroom sessions required, is it? Yeah, I need to add that into my weekly work-ons <laughs> too, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, Ethan, for you, buddy, like, um, you know, I had a look at it. You actually didn't play a huge amount of rugby at high school. You, you dabbled here and there, um, but actually other things took up your time. You love to get out um, out in the bush a little bit um, in the weekends and, and didn't necessarily tear into rugby. Was it wasn't until after school, was it club footy when you started almost playing footy full-time? You've done your research, you're pretty on the money there. You're actually pretty tough, there's like one article or something where I could, could dig it up, but I made a few phone calls and I got there, but yeah, it was yeah. a tough man actually. No, nah, no, nah, you're on to it. Um, yeah, at, at school I yeah was into my hunting and sort of um, meat harvesting, all that jazz, so I used to I used to go and do that a lot, um, and I, yeah, it wasn't until out of school where I got into, my first season was senior B footy for Nelson, Yep. so I went and... Um, yeah, that's where I really got the love of the game back and started enjoying it. Yeah, get off the pitch and <laughs> shower up and straight into a beer <laughs> oh, <laughs> every mate. weekend. So, oh, but it's sort of like another because when I was looking at it, I thought of another guy you probably get along with because he loves hunting as well as Luke Romano, who down in Christchurch, and he was the same. You know, didn't necessarily um, play first fifteen footy at high school and all that sort of stuff. He came through the club scene, and and it's the same for you, was it? When did it, like, it's all well and good playing club footy and, and, and enjoying it and getting a bit of passion for it and having a beer afterwards with the boys. When did you start to realise, actually, there's, um, could be a profession here and, and um, was it when did you get selected for Tasman? Is that when it started becoming a bit more of reality and, and not just something to do on the weekends? Um, yeah, so a year after that first senior beat, um, yeah, I, uh, I got picked halfway through the season in the academy sort of thing. Yeah, so I joined that and then um, played under 19s for Tasman and then I miraculously got selected in the under 20s squad, just the training <laughs> yeah. camp. Yeah, and yeah, that was a real like I I definitely didn't feel I should have been there. Like yep. I was gobsmacked. So that was a bit of an eye opener. And then from there, that probably opened the eyes to shit. There's a yeah, you can play it for a job. Yeah. So that yeah, from there probably stemmed a bit of um motivation to yeah, crack crack on and um yeah, try and make it happen. Yeah, cool. And like um obviously you're playing good footy, particularly this year, it's awesome. You've you've had a great run without getting injured, you've played almost um on an upward curve the whole season. But also do you think um I don't know, sometimes I wonder 
Um, we all think sometimes there's a certain pathway or a certain system you have to go through, but I can imagine, I'm just guessing, that you know, you're almost not fatigued or you, there's no mental fatigue from playing years and years of, of routine footy, you know, like some of the first 15s are doing three, four, five sessions a week. You know, you actually you know, probably spent a bit of time with your mates, got outside, did a lot of things you loved, and, and when you started getting into footy, you were fizzed. I'm just making guesses here, but you know, you had a heap of energy for it and, and there was no no need to um, find that balance, or you still got to have that balance, but you know, you hit it in a completely different sort of journey to a lot of others had. Yeah, you've nailed that in a nutshell. That's exactly sort of. it, really. It was a bit messy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that's, uh, I, I was able to do things I enjoyed, and then, um, yeah, when I really wanted to have a go at it and just play footy, that, yeah, I felt fresh and, um, yeah, no, you you know that. Yeah, no, and talk a little bit about Crusaders. I mean, awesome first part of the year. Um, you know, you got it's awesome. You got a lot of mates um, that you're no doubt going to go in the All Blacks squad with, which will probably help, I suppose, having a few familiar faces around as you do that. But um, you know, was it your rise this season? Um, was it part of was it Razor and that just saying go for it, son, back yourself? Um, you know, you. You maybe you've got on the side because there's a little bit of versatility there. You're someone who could jump around a couple of positions, which is always super handy within a squad. You know, are you comfortable in any position, or you prefer to rock up at six and just move bodies and carry the ball? What's your preference? Um, yeah, no, I was um, pretty chuffed for the opportunities I got for the Crusaders this year, and yeah, I was stoked. To, um, yeah, just put the jersey on again. It'd been a while. But uh, yeah, pro- I don't actually mind where I play in the loose forward trio. Um, yeah, Razor used to say like versatility is pretty crucial, so that just sort of inspired me to just yeah, whatever jersey's handed, just do it, and that means you got to be on top of your game with um, all the skill sets required in each position. So I think it's good for me. Yeah, totally. And did you give the old man a buzz straight away, like uh, when you heard the news? Because is he still overseas? I'm not 100% sure what he's up to these days. Did you give him a call straight off the bat? Uh, not straight off the bat. No, the phone was going ballistic like <laughs> like, um, like Finn's. But um, yeah, gave him a call about half an hour later. I actually missed Fozzie's call as well, so <laughs> I had to give him a ring in the morning. But um, yeah, just a quick call and yeah, congratulations from him and all that. No fanfare, just go for it, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. basically. Yeah, bloody good. Now, lads, what does it look like? We're, we're in the All Black squad. We got named on Monday night. Awesome. Like, good times. We've got two debutants. We've got Carl back in the mix. Not an ex-All Black at all. A current, established, old master. Um, what does the next few days look like for you guys? We've got a test match in two weekends away. First one's against Tonga. What are we doing in the build-up now? You've got all your kit. You look smart. Um, you know, is it a whole lot of media stuff for a couple of days before you get on the paddock? Um, at the moment, I think we're planning on, you know, um, moving around the community, trying to get into South Auckland with everything that's been going on down there. So, you know, getting amongst the people and, um, yeah, slowly getting into our game ready for next week. Yeah, cool. And um, so are you together up here in Auckland right through until uh, match day at Mount Smart Stadium next Saturday v Tonga, is that right? I think we're in for about three days. Um, on Saturday we'll get to go home, but then we reassemble on Monday. Yeah, cool. And uh, who who are you rooming with? Who you been stuck with? Some some old dog to bring you in, you know, show you the ways? Or, or have they put, like, rogue, wet behind the ears, young fellas together to basically get it all wrong and get disciplined? You know, what's the, what's the setup? Um, I'm I'm with Nuggy, so oh, yeah. they're not too bad. I get him to teach me how to pass. So. <laughs> Ethan, I've um I've got Colsey, the legend. So nah, it's, I'm looking forward to it. Eh? Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. And Cal, like you, you like the props, share oh, rooms. No. Like my God, we have usually got a um, snoring crew. So like, <laughs> we only go with each other because we don't want to uh, ruin anyone's sleep. <laughs>